Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, I want to go over something that was said in President Nelson's talk. Uh, now, this idea came to me from Chris Windhorst. He sent this email. He says, did you catch President Nelson prophesy that 1 Nephi 1414 had been fulfilled? A couple of conferences ago, he said would be. Th uh, this was his way of saying what comes next, verse 15. And then he puts the the scripture in here. Verse 14. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld the power of the Lamb of God, that it descended upon the saints of the church of the Lamb, and upon the covenant people of the Lord, who had who were scattered upon all the face of the earth, and they were armed with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory. And it came to pass that I beheld the wrath of God was poured out upon the great and abominable church, insomuch that there were wars and rumors of wars upon all, all the nations and kindreds of the earth. Thanks, Chris. Thank you for the email, Chris. So what I did is I decided to add that scripture to my um, scripture tracker. And um, I just wanted, I wanted to show you how much this is coming up in conference lately. And uh, just for the fun of it, we haven't looked at this for a while. I also included this right here, column D, which is Matthew 24, verse 14, gospel to all the earth, referring to the prophecy that the gospel has to go to all the earth. Okay. Uh, these are just two of the many uh, scriptures that I've looked up, how many times they've popped up in general conference and general conference talks. So let's... Uh, hide those columns again we're mostly focusing on this one right here but you can also take a look at uh, column d as well so first nephi 1414 the power of god descending on the saints and the covenant people of the lord in great glory so we here we are in the 1940s okay you see a bunch of uh gospel to all the earth you know not so much with the first nephi 1414 Okay, you still see just a ton, just a ton of gospel to all the earth. Now we're in the 60s. Pretty frequent. Here we are in the 70s. Still not a whole lot of 1 Nephi 1414, 14, the power of God and great glory. Um, and this has kind of lightened up a little bit with gospel to all the earth. Now we're in the 80s. It's just kind of uh, nothing really in, in either column. Let's advance some more. And now, what's interesting for gospel to all the earth, um, the last time that we see this happen, and spoiler alert, this is the last time that that scripture had been cited in General Conference, was in 2004. Okay, And you can also see with 1 Nephi 14.14 14, that that's starting to pick up compared to the past. In the past, it was always just onesies and twosies and lots of white space. A lot of years where it hadn't been cited. Okay, but then you get to um, probably starting, I would say, maybe 2008, it starts to kind of pick up a lot more. And then for the first time since 1942, in 2016, it's cited four times. And then here's the, the last few years. So there's definitely been a, a pretty big uptick in citing 1 Nephi 1414. So that to me would indicate that uh, it's really applicable right now. Uh, maybe it has to do with prophecy being fulfilled, that, that prophecy in particular. Um, so we're going to read that and what that's all about, and then look at some, some of the occurrences in which this showed up in General Conference. And then uh, just one last look at this, column D, Matthew 24, 14, Gospel to all the earth. We have not seen that scripture in a long time since 2004. It's almost been 20 years since that that scripture was cited. Is that an indication that the time of the Gentiles is over? No, not necessarily. Remember, there's two parts to it. One part is the land, meaning uh, Jerusalem specifically. Uh, I would say that that's been fulfilled since 1967, after the Six-Day War, when Israel gained Jerusalem, and now they're physically in possession of it. That's one of the, the definitions of the times of the Gentiles. Um, but the other definition, the other part to it is the gospel being taken first to the Gentiles and then to the Jews. And uh, anyway, that's a topic for another time, but I just thought that you'd find this interesting. Um, I also 
Oops, here we go. I forgot to bring it over to, with these. Okay, I also went to my phrase tracker. This is uh, looking for specific phrases, not scriptures so much. Uh, so pay attention to... Well, let's just kind of look at C. I, I had already done D a while ago, Power of God and Great Glory. But I noticed that in General Conference, there's been been a lot of great glory being said. And it comes from two different scriptures uh, that I'm aware of. The first one is 1 Nephi 14, okay? The the power of God and great glory descending on the covenant people of the Lord. And then the other one is from Joseph Smith Matthew. Um, I believe this is also, unless, unless the Joseph Smith translation changed it, uh, this should also show up in Matthew 24. But here in Joseph Smith Matthew verse 36... Christ says, and as I said before, after the tribulation of those days and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of, they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So those are the two scriptures I'm aware of that seem to be quoted that use this phrase power and great glory. So going back to the phrase tracker, I just kind of looked for great glory, and that's it. And so uh, what you can see here is that, yeah, just just like the the scripture citations, it's been used quite a lot recently in General Conference, probably since uh, 2013 until present. And for some reason, it's absent in the year 2017. You go back in time, you know, it's just kind of scant, except for... Uh, the 70s, and that's typically the case, which is weird. This this is an indication that this is basically a second coming, or these are second coming scriptures. One of them definitely is. The other one, the first Nephi one, I don't know, but I guess, I guess it is. And the reason why I say that is because other phrases that have to do with the second coming, there's usually a, a really high frequency of those terms being used in the 60s and 70s, but especially in the 70s. And so there's usually a pattern between all these different words and phrases. And uh, that's the case here with great glory. The 70s, there was a lot of great glory being said. And then you go back in time and it kind of quiets back down. So um, so there's a lot of great glory being talked about right now. Okay, so this is what President Nelson said. This was his last talk of April 2023 General Conference. Uh, he, you know, uh, gave us all these temples right here, announced all these temples. And then he says, my dear brothers and sisters, I bear witness that Jesus Christ directs the affairs of his church. I testify that following him is the only way to endure to enduring happiness. I know that his power is descending upon his covenant keeping people who are, quote, armed with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory. Um, I went and found the other time that he said this. Okay. This was in 2020, April, General Conference, which is interesting. This scripture really must mean something to President Nelson because he used it in that very key conference, April 2020, and he used it in this last conference as part of his last talk. But in 2020, in, uh, <clears throat> in the, the talk called Hear Him, he says, <coughs> excuse me, we live in the day that our fathers have awaited with anxious expectation. That's from Doctrine and Covenants 121.27. In fact, let's read that really quick. Which our, which our fathers have awaited with anxious, anxious expectation to be revealed in the last times, uh, which their minds were pointed to by the angels as held in reserve for the fullness of their glory. In a time to come in which nothing shall be withheld, whether there be one God or many gods, they shall be manifest. All thrones and dominions, principalities and powers shall be revealed and set forth upon all who, who have endured valiantly for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Also, if there be bounds set to the heavens or to the seas or to the dry land or to the sun, moon or, or stars. All the times of the revolutions, all the appointed days, months, and years, all the days of their days, months, and years, and all their glories, laws, and set times shall be revealed in the days of the dispensation of the fullness of times. 
Well, that's pretty interesting. So President Nelson says, we live in the day that our forefathers have awaited with anxious expectation. So that applies to what I just read. And he says, we have front row seats to witness live what the prophet Nephi saw only in vision that, quote, the power of the Lamb of God would descend upon the covenant people of the Lord who were, who were scattered upon all the face of the earth and they are armed with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory. You, my brothers and sisters are among those men, women and children whom Nephi saw. Think of that. So um, here's that key word that Chris brought up would. Um, so I don't, I don't know that I necessarily read it the same. Possibly he says, we have that means like we are now sitting in the seats to the front row seats to witness live what nephi saw uh, only in vision that pa the power of the lamb of god would descend so he's talking in the in the context of what nephi saw would happen but it seems like he's saying back then that it's happening right now because he says you my brothers and sisters sisters are among those men women and children whom nephi saw think of that so i don't know you can read this either way but either way okay that's kind of a it's not really that important of a point either way the fact that he quoted this again in this last general conference let's go back to it he says i know that his power is descending upon his covenant so if there was any doubt back then in 2020 uh this repetition of it and him saying it this way i know that his power is descending upon his covenant keeping people who are armed with righteousness and with the power of god and great glory that should you know uh really solidify that for you if you had any doubt so what i thought would be helpful is if we read the chapter to get the context and uh, this is a, a rather interesting chapter. This has to do a lot with the great and abominable church. This is a, this is, okay, the great and abominable church, in my view, and based on my research, which is based on what has actually been said by prophets, apostles, general authorities, okay, and again, I've, I've got to say it. I have a playlist for this. In our church, from my point of view and what I've studied, we don't have the concept of a one-person antichrist that has to appear before the second coming. There are people right now in the church that are waiting for uh, King Charles III or Bill Gates or Benjamin Netanyahu, or whoever, to be that person. Because they have gone to other Christian denominations uh, that read the scriptures from their point of view, not understanding the very important concept of the great apostasy, the way that we understand it. Because if you understand the great apostasy, you look at the footnotes, you look at the Joseph Smith translations, you look at the commentary by prophets and apostles, the scriptures that evangelicals and others use to deduce that there is a one person antichrist actually refers to the great apostasy and Satan himself. We do have in, the, in our church, which uh, this concept is absent from other churches, have the concept of the great and abominable church. OK, it's not one person. It's not even just one church. Let me read the chapter heading. An angel tells Nephi of the blessings and cursings to fall upon the Gentiles. There are only two churches, the church of the Lamb of God and the church of the devil. The saints of God in all nations are persecuted by the great and abominable church. The Apostle John will write concerning the end of the world. So this is interesting because this is talking about basically our version of the great antichrist power which is the great and abominable church not a single person but essentially a collection of organizations churches so on and so forth that are under the influence of satan um, and this chapter references the book of revelation because that's what this is talking about right here the apostle john will will write concerning the end of the world that's talking about the book of revelation so let's go ahead and read this and 
pay particular attention to verse 14 and 15, uh, like Chris pointed out. And it, and it shall come to pass that if the Gentiles shall hearken unto the Lamb of God in that day, that he shall manifest himself unto them in word, and also in power, in, in very deed, unto the taking away of their stumbling blocks. And harden not their hearts against the Lamb of God. They shall be numbered among the seed of thy father. Yea, they shall be numbered among the house of Israel, and they shall be blessed. They shall be a blessed people upon the promised land forever. They shall no more... They shall be no more brought down into captivity, and the house of Israel shall no more be confounded. And that great pit, which hath been digged for them by the great and abominable church, which was founded by the devil and his children, that he might lead away the souls of men down to hell. Yea, the great pit, which hath been digged for the destruction of men, uh, shall be filled by those who digged it unto their utter destruction, saith the Lamb of God. Not the destruction of the soul, save it be the casting of it into that hell which hath no end. For behold, this is according to the captivity of the devil, and also according to the justice of God, upon all those who will work wickedness and abomination before him. So this is really interesting. Um, I want to look at the footnote for this, about, about the pit. Matthew 7, 1 through 2, judge not that ye be not judged, for that wit, for with that judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with that measure ye meet, it shall be meet, measured to you again. Um, let's see, Doctrine and Covenants 10, 25 through 27, yea, he saith unto them, deceive and lie and wait to catch that ye may destroy. Behold, this is no harm. And thus he flattereth them, and telleth them that it is no sin to lie, that he may catch a man in a lie, that he may destroy him. And thus he flattereth them, and leadeth them along, until he draggeth their souls down to hell. And thus he causeth them to catch themselves in their own snare. And thus he goeth up and down, to and fro in the earth, seeking to destroy the souls of men. And then uh, Doctrine and Covenants 109.25 that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, that he who diggeth a pit for them shall fall into the same himself. That's a sad concept for the wicked. You know, no one wants to see anybody suffer, even if they're wicked. But it's a good concept for us if we're righteous, that those that are trying to do you harm, those that are judging you, persecuting you, da 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 da, all that stuff, in the end, it's going to be to their own downfall, essentially, right? And, and we've talked about a number of times uh, that tangibly, the things that the enemy does to the church, the Lord uses those things and turns them into good. He's able to use, uh, allow people to have their agency, do bad things, but then turn it around for some kind of good. Uh, one example of that is war. War is horrible, it's terrible, but one thing that it does, it creates a situation where you have people that have to flee a country, for example, say Syria, a country where we don't have any missionary work. And then they end up in Europe or the United States or some other place that takes them in. And then now they're in a situation where they can accept the gospel and meet with the missionaries. It'll depend on based on, you know, from person to person. But generally speaking, it kind of it frees them in that sense. So I really do not worry too much about the forces the evil forces of this world i focus on being righteous knowing that yeah bad things can happen but there can be a lot of good that comes out of it and ultimately that god's in control anyway let's continue for behold this is according to the captivity of the devil and also according to the justice of god upon all those who will work wickedness and the abomination before him and it came to pass that the angel spake unto me nephi saying uh, thou hast beheld that if the Gentiles repent, it shall be well with them. And thou also knowest concerning the covenants of the Lord unto the house of Israel. And thou also hast heard that whoso repenteth not must perish. Therefore, woe be unto the Gentiles, if it so be that they harden their hearts against the Lamb of God. For the time cometh, saith the Lamb of God, that I will work a great and a marvelous work among the children of men, a work which shall be everlasting, either on the one hand or on the other, either to the convincing them unto peace and life eternal, 
or unto the deliverance of them to the hardness of their hearts and the blindness of their minds unto their being brought down and kept captivity and also into destruction both temporally and spiritually according to the captivity of the devil of which i have spoken and it came to pass that the angel had spoken these words he said unto me rememberest thou the covenants of the father unto the house of israel and i said unto him yea you click on covenants he's referring to the um abrahamic covenant right and then the 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 mission of israel you know being a blessing to the world but the the abrahamic covenant primarily um and it came to pass that he said unto me look and behold the great and abominable church which is the mother of abominations whose founder is the devil okay here's that great antichrist power uh, which is diverse it's not just one organization it's throughout the whole world okay he said unto me Behold, there are saved two churches only. The one is the church of the Lamb of God, and the other is the church of the devil. Wherefore, whoso belongeth not to the church of the Lamb of God, belongeth to the great to that great church, which, which is the mother of abominations, uh, and she is the whore of all the earth. And it came to pass, oh, and by the way, yeah, this takes you to Revelation 17. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Great Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the, where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And it came to pass that I beheld the church of the Lamb of God, and its numbers were few, because, because of the wickedness and abominations of the whore who sat upon the many waters. Nevertheless, I beheld that the church of the Lamb, who were the saints of God, were also upon all the face of the earth, and their dominions upon the face of the earth were small because of the wickedness of the great whore whom I saw. Now look at this. We've looked at this a number of times. Um, here it is. <clears throat> this is the our uh, church's meeting house locator. And uh, you can you can see yes indeed that we have meeting houses all throughout the earth, all throughout the earth on every continent. Let me refresh this. It's having a hard time matching up the dots with the location. So here you see we're starting to get a, starting to get a bunch in Africa. We have a bunch in South America, Central America, Mexico, United States, Canada. Europe all over the place, including Russia. There's Mongolia. There's some in China. There's India, even Pakistan. Let's zoom in a little bit. We have some over here in Israel and in Jordan. By the way, uh, Elder Bednar recently, not recently, but like a year ago, he went to Jordan. This is Amman, but we have a few like branches there. Um, United Arab Emirates, where there's also going to be a temple. There's going to be a temple in India. So you can see that the the church is essentially across the entire world. Indonesia, uh, in this last conference, we had that uh, that temple that was announced for right here for Jakarta, Indonesia. And here's this island that has all these different meeting houses. The Philippines is just on fire in a good way, not a cleansing way. South Korea, Japan. Whenever I think of the Isles of the Sea, I, I usually think about the Pacific Ocean, although I know that includes the UK. You have uh, New Zealand down here, Tasmania, but, you know, they're all across the Pacific Ocean, you know, just all over the place, all over the place. This is a pretty, this would be a pretty stunning thing if you were to take this map and show it to Joseph Smith, Brigham Young. Maybe not them, maybe because they foresaw it in vision, but if you took their contemporaries, um, just a, a member of the church from their time, they would probably be really stunned to see this map. We've come a long way since that time. So, yes, our numbers are few. I looked at our percentage compared to the world population. And so what I did, 17 million divided by 8 billion, and it's not even 1%. Not even 1%. Very few. And don't let that distress you because we know that there is a spirit world. But just generally speaking, we know that um, those that find the truth are going to be few. 
you know, the Savior himself said that straight and narrow is the path, and few there be that that find it, that findeth it, right? So anyway, very small, and it's not over yet. We don't know when the second coming is. I wouldn't be surprised if it was this year, but it may not be. But let's get back to First Nephi 14. Okay. And it came to pass that I beheld that great mother of abominations uh, did gather together multitudes upon the face of the earth, of all the earth, among all the nations of the Gentiles, to fight against the Lamb of God. I highlighted fight because that takes you to Revelation 17, again, verses 1 through 6. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and uh, talked with me, saying, unto me come hither and i will sh i will shew unto thee the judgments of the great horde that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and i saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her, her forehead was a name written. Now, this is what we read earlier, and this is the great and abominable church. Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Uh, Revelation 18:24. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and all and of all that were slain upon the earth. Okay. Okay. So it's talking about the great and abominable church, uh, both in the book of Revelation and here in First Nephi 14. Okay, now here it is. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld the power of the Lamb of God, that it descended upon the saints of the church of the Lamb, and upon the covenant people of the Lord, who were scattered upon all the face of the earth. And they were armed with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory. Um, so it's interesting that there's such an emphasis on this right now, because there's like this contrast between this big, powerful, great abominable church that's fighting against the lamb of god and against the church and killing the prophets and saints and stuff like that satan has really had his time and he's had his time of power and it seems like he still has a lot of power right now and uh you think again i, I know i sound like a, bro a broken record but think back to this the october 2022 general conference and what sister nelson said about that conference how they knew that it would be a singular event because of the number of attacks on the church in the lead up to that conference. Um, and there have been a lot of attacks on the church, um, both socially, politically, uh, all these different things. And, it, and it's increasing. So that's why right now it's pretty important to realize that God is protecting his people and he's arming us with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory. And uh, one thing I wanted to point out really quick, because it kind of falls into what I'm saying here, uh, Elder Bednar in particular, I feel like he's used this a number of times, but here we have two talks. In fact, this talk uh, that he gave October 2021 is called With the Power of God in Great Glory. And uh, right up here, right at the very top, he has the scripture, 1 Nephi 14.14. 14, and he says in the, like, the subtitle, uh, or the sub, I don't know what you call it. Honoring covenants arms us with righteousness, with the power of God and great glory. Covenants. 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 And um, he goes through here. I'm not going to read this whole talk, but. Oh, you know what? No, this is just one talk, but for but it has it twice. It's kind of weird. Um, the phrase armed with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory is not simply a nice idea or an example of beautiful scriptural language. Rather, these blessings are readily evident in the lives of countless Latter-day disciples of the Lord. Um, I can't remember where he said this, but somewhere in here he emphasized the fact that it's uh, 
Well, let, look right here. He he italicizes upon the covenant people of the Lord, and he goes on to, and he talks about covenants and uh, binding our si ourselves with Christ through covenants, being um, bound to Him. Right. So it's all about covenants. It's about the covenant path. It's about going to the temple, and we know that when we go to the temple, to go to the temple, we are um, armed with power and great glory, and we come out of there with additional protection. Right. So that's probably something that's very important in a time like this where the great and abominable church has so much power. But look at this. Let's go back to this. OK, so this is what President Nelson said is happening right now. This right here. Um, upon the. OK, so and it came to pass. This is right now. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld the power of the Lamb of God, that it descended upon the saints of the church of the Lamb and upon the covenant people of the Lord, who were scattered upon all the face of the earth, and they were armed with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory. And then here's the next verse. And it came to pass that I beheld that the wrath of God was poured out upon the great and abominable church, insomuch that there were wars and rumors of wars among all the nations and kindreds of the earth. And as there began to be wars and rumors of wars among all the nations which belong to the mother of abominations, the angel spake unto me, saying, Behold, the wrath of God is poured upon the mother of harlots. And behold, thou seest all these things. And when the day cometh that the wrath of God is poured out upon the mother of harlots, which is the great and abominable church of all the earth, whose founder is the devil, then at that day the work of the Father shall commence in preparing the way for the fulfilling of his covenants, which he hath made uh, to his people who are of the house of Israel. So let's look and see what that takes us to. If we click on that footnote, what covenants is he talking about? Mormon chapter 8, verses 21 and 41. And he shall breathe out wrath and strifes against the work. Sorry, okay. And he that shall breathe out wrath and strifes against the work of the Lord and against the covenant people of the Lord, who are the house of Israel, and shall say, We will destroy the work of the Lord, and the Lord will not remember his covenant, which he hath made unto the house of Israel. Uh, the same is in danger to be hewn down and cast into fire. 41. Behold, the sword of our of vengeance hangeth over you, and the time soon, soon cometh that he avengeth the blood of the saints upon you, for he will not suffer their cries any longer. And then it also points you to the Abrahamic covenant, but specifically this right here, that those that fight against the Lord, uh, they're going to be destroyed. And I, and I can only assume that this has reference to the second coming and uh, the final, uh, like the cleansing of the earth. Um, I just want to see if it says anything about this here. The Lamanites seek out and destroy the Nephites. The Book of Mormon will come forth by the power of God. Woes pronounced upon those who breathe out wrath and strife against the work of the Lord. The Nephite record will come forth in a, in a day of wickedness, degeneracy, and apostasy. Okay, so maybe maybe not so much. Let me look at verse, verse 41 is the last uh, verse. Oh, and look at the verse before. It talks about secret combinations, because that's another key part, a key concept of the great and abominable church and the power of the world. It's not just, you know, it's not just it's not just the open uh, public face of the great and abominable church. It's the secrets that hold it up. It's the secret combinations. It's the. So anyway. Yea, why do you build up your secret abominations to get gain? And, well, it says abominations, but this would also be, you know, secret combinations. See, topical guide, secret combinations. Yea, why do you build up your secret combinations to get gain and cause that widow should mourn before the Lord and also orphans to mourn before the Lord and also the blood of their fathers and their husbands to cry out unto the Lord from the ground for vengeance upon your heads? Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to this. So let's read that again. And when the day cometh that the wrath of God is poured out upon the mother of harlots, which is the great and abominable church of all the earth, whose founder is the devil, then at that day the work of the Father shall commence in preparing the way for the fulfilling of his covenants. 
okay? Bringing vengeance upon the wicked, essentially, which he hath made to his people who are of the house of Israel. And it came to pass that the angel spake unto me, saying, Look, and I looked and beheld a man, and he was dressed in a white robe. And the angel said unto me, Behold, one of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Behold, he shall see and write the remainder of these things, yea, and also many things which have been. So now he, Nephi is being introduced and shown John, the Revelator. And now we're talking about the book of Revelation. And he shall also write concerning the end of the world, right? The book of Revelation. Wherefore, the things which he shall write are just and true. And behold, they are written in the book which thou uh, beheld proceeding out of the mouth of the Jew. And at the time they proceeded out of the mouth of the Jew, or at the time the book proceeded out of the mouth of the Jew, the things which were written were plain and pure and most precious and easy to understand of all men. And behold, the things which this apostle of the Lamb shall write are many things which thou hast seen, and behold, the remainder shalt thou see. But the things which thou shalt see hereafter thou shalt not write, for the Lord hath ordained the apostle of the Lamb of God that he should write them. I've always thought that this was really interesting, like that it couldn't be just like written again or uh, written in different language or something like that, especially after he just said that when it first came out of the mouth of the Jew, it was plain and easy to understand. But apparently something happened. And again, my, my question about all the different books of the Bible, whether it's the Old Testament or whether it's the New Testament, where is the original, like the one, the original book of revelation that was actually touched and written upon by john the revelator or any of any of the prophets that have ever written a book because there are those that that don't like the church that will say oh no everything has been translated correctly but until i see the actual original who knows what happened between that very first original and then the ones that we have now if, if, any, if any of you have more knowledge about this, please let me know. Are there originals anywhere? As far as I'm aware, there's not. There are no originals. We have copies that go back like a long time, you know, but ultimately they are not the originals. So anyway, okay, so let's continue. Um... But the things which thou shalt see hereafter, thou shalt not write, for the Lord God hath ordained the apostle of the Lamb of God, that he should write them. And also others who have been to them hath he shown all things, and they, they have written them, and they are sealed up to come forth in their purity according to the truth which is in the Lamb, in the own due time of the Lord, unto the house of Israel. And I, Nephi, heard and bear record that the name of the apostle of the Lamb was John, according to the word of the angel. And behold, I, Nephi, am forbidden that I should write the, remain the remainder of the things which I saw and heard. Wherefore, the things which I have written sufficeth me, and I have written but a small part of the things which I saw. And I bear record that I saw the things which my father saw, and the angel of the Lord did make them known unto me. And now I make an end of speaking concerning the things which I saw while I was carried away in the spirit. And if all the things which I saw are not written... Uh, the things which I have written are true, and thus it is. Amen. Okay, so it's interesting. I, is it a prophecy? Well, yeah, I think it kind of is, because President Nelson is saying, hey, this is happening right now. And what happens after that? The wrath of God poured upon the great and abominable church. And uh, furthermore, you know, this covenant that we, where was it? Okay, so yeah, so I lose it. Anyway, um, the the covenant that basically the great and abominable church would reap what it sows, that um, the blood from the ground will cry up against you know the great and abominable church. So basically, yeah, I I I, w I would think that President Nelson is essentially saying, hey, we are here, we are good. Uh, like he said, his last talk of the October. General Conference, 2022, the name of his talk was Focus on the Temple. And I can only assume that it's because we're getting really close to the second coming. And the surest way to know that you're good is to go to the temple and be worthy 
to have that temple recommend, but to also go to the temple, <coughs> enter into those covenants, and uh, you'll have the power of God and great glory uh, to protect you and, and to be armed with righteousness. So therefore, we're so close. Focus on the temple. If you haven't gone to the temple yet, and you can, go. Go. You know, if, you, if you're a young woman, it, it's up to you if you want to wait till you um, are married or if you go on a mission. But it seems like the tone has changed recently for young women. It's like, well, yeah, you have to be, you have to go through the temple if you're going to go on a mission. But if you don't, you know what? Maybe you don't necessarily wait now. Uh, go to the temple. Okay. It's probably because right now that power is needed by everybody as we're entering this stage. Um, I wanted to finish just by uh, reading a few things. Oh, by the way, in case you're wondering how I compiled this, so uh, when you use the the scripture citation index, like I was focused just on this on uh, verse 14 of First Nephi 14, 14. Uh, of verse 14 of First Nephi 14. Um, when you go to the scripture citation index, when you're searching for something, it'll have like the different, like for example, right here, these are the times that somebody cited chapter 14 verses 10 through 17 which includes verse 14 so i had to do this and then look up this one 12 through 14 12 and 14 and then just 14 and then verses 14 through 15 so it's kind of annoying uh the way that it that i that it is right now but i understand why they have it laid out like this but um i took all these together to come up with this for the tracker just in case you're wondering so i want to read uh just a few things here i want to focus on just the t the time um during which president nelson was the, the president of the church so here we are president nelson's first general conference as president of the church and elder quentin l cook um is the first one to cite that scripture in a talk called prepare to meet God. So let's see what he says here. Okay. Where do we stand today in fulfilling these divinely appointed responsibilities? Let's zoom in. Where to go? Gosh, dang it. That's okay. We'll find it. Okay, first, with respect to Moses' restoration of the keys for the gathering of Israel, today almost 70,000 missionaries are spread across the earth preaching his gospel to gather his elect. This is the commencement of the fulfillment of the great and marvelous work Nephi foresaw among both the, the Gentiles and the house of Israel. Nephi saw our time when the saints of God would be upon all the face of the earth, but their numbers would, would be small because of, the, of, because of wickedness. However, he foresaw that they would be armed with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory. When viewed across the brief history of the restored church, the missionary effort has been most remarkable. Uh, we are seeing the fulfillment of Nephi's vision. Though our numbers are relatively few, we'll, we will continue our effort and, and outreach to those who will respond to the Savior's message. Okay, let's see what Elder Gong said. As Lamb, as Lamb of God, our Savior knows when we feel alone, diminished, uncertain, or afraid. In vision, Nephi saw the power of the Lamb of God descend upon the saints of the Church of the Lamb and upon the covenant people of the Lord. Though scattered upon all the face of the earth, they were armed with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory. Um, this promise of hope and comfort includes our day. And then he has like a little note here. Uh, see also 1st Nephi 13, 15, and 37. Plain and precious writings shall come forth by the gift and power of the Lamb. If we endure to the end, we shall be saved in the everlasting kingdom of the Lamb. All right. Bonnie H. Corden. Uh, she, looks like she's quoting a hymn or something like that. Oh no. Tonight I would like to announce a revision to the young women theme. I pray you will feel the Holy Ghost testify of the truth of those words as I say the new theme. And in the theme, it says, 
With faith, I will strengthen my home and family, making keep sacred covenants. And that, and with that, she she quotes uh, or cites First Nephi fourteen fourteen, making keep sacred covenants, and receive the ordinances and blessings of the holy temple. President Nelson, we already read this. You, my brothers and sisters, are among those men, women, and children whom Nephi saw. Think of that. Elder D. Todd Christofferson. Let us heed the prophet's call to stay on the covenant path. Yeah, see? This this is how you do it. This is how you have the power of God and, and great glory come upon you and, and how you're armed with righteousness. Nephi saw us in our time and recorded, and then he quotes it. And then he says, With Nephi, my soul delighteth in the covenants of the Lord. On Easter Sunday, I bear testimony. Okay. Anthony Perkins. Let's see. We are also blessed by temple covenants and ordinances where the power of godliness is manifest. I visited a woman who had lost a teenage daughter in a terrible accident, then later her husband to cancer. I asked how she could endure such loss and suffering. She replied that strength came from spiritual reassurances of an eternal family received during regular temple worship received during regular temple worship as promised the ordinances of the lord's house had armed her with god's power okay uh david a benar we've already kind of looked at this and then the last one i don't know if, if this has been said in this conference aside from uh president nelson i don't know if anybody else cited this but let's see what reina reina i aberto said who is she she is the second counselor in the Relief Society General Presidency. She says, um, From the beginning, God has sought to gather and organize his children, to bring to pass our immortality and eternal life. With that purpose in mind, he has instructed us to build places of worship where we receive knowledge and ordinances of salvation and exaltation, making keep covenants that bind us to Jesus Christ. And are endowed with the power of godliness. And uh, that's the part where she cites 1 Nephi 14.14. 14. And gather together often to remember Jesus and strengthen each other in him. Uh, the church organization and its buildings exist for our spiritual benefit. The church is the scaffolding with which we build eternal families. Okay, I think that's all that I'm going to read about that. Um... You know what, here's this too. Remember President Nelson's main talk of the October 2022 General Conference, this very stunning uh, thing that he said. He says, But my dear brothers and sisters, so many wonderful things are ahead. In coming days, we will see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power that the world has ever seen. Between now and the time he returns with power and great glory. Um, this word, glory, if you'll remember uh, from a previous video, we were looking at the idea that it was glory that allowed Moses to distinguish between God and Satan because Satan didn't have any glory. And uh, when Christ comes, he's going to have that glory. And the, and the glory uh, can be had and felt when you go to the temple. And I think it does have actual, actual power. And when Christ comes and this becomes a terrestrial world, uh, it's going to be everywhere. So it, it's like, I feel like it's like saying uh, the power of the temple, of, of, of the temple space, which of course comes from Christ. It ultimately comes from the presence of God, Christ. Um, but essentially it's like you should go to the temple you'll receive protection we have people in the world that want to do us harm they want to persecute us they want us to um, join them with the great and spacious building but that time is coming to an end and it feels like president nelson is highlighting like look go to the temple make covenants the, the time of the great and spacious building, the time of the great and abominable church, the, the time of the great antichrist powers in the world is coming to an end very soon. So, so uh, focus on the temple. 
you know, right here, focus on the temple, right? And then this last general conference, uh, like we've talked about for the few, the past few videos, it feels like uh, the message is clear. It's like everything's been said that needs to be said. Go to the temple. We've made like all these different changes in the church, the way that we do things. And uh, this last conference, it's like, look, now is the time, you guys. Uh, maybe maybe this is the last time that we're going to tell you become a Zion people, get rid of contention, um, learn to love others, and you know just so on and so forth. Everything that we've talked about, but this is how he closes the the conference. His last talk is this concept of uh, being the covenant keeping people who are armed with righteousness and with the power of God and great glory. Because you know what, ultimately, that's probably going to be what helps us. Uh, not be burned when the earth is cleansed because if it's the glory of god if it's if it's the glory of christ that comes and it burns the world then um you're gonna be okay if you have that glory already because you've been to the temple now of course it's gonna have to fall on those that are terrestrial too but uh we would do well to go to the temple and uh, receive that Okay, well, uh, that's going to be it for this one. So thanks again, Chris, for your email and for pointing this out. I do, uh, yes, I do think that it's significant. And I do think that it's it's happening right now, uh, which is just simply stunning. Uh, but that'll be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it. And I'll talk to you guys later.